start the recording. All righty. So like I was mentioning, you know, Git is a version control tool. It is basically um, what allows you to kind of pick some checkpoints within um, the history of your project and kind of like save these snapshots. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways that we find that to be useful. Of course, you know, sometimes like, you know, if you were to lose any um, data or anything like that, you know, it would be good to have copies of it. Um, and so that's one thing that is useful for, you know, everyone that has access to the Git repository for projects has the entire project history as it exists, um, you know, however up to date they are. So that's helpful. But um, usually what we find uh, especially helpful as a developer is that, you know, you, there's times where you have to roll back changes that you made. There's times where, you know, you're working with a team and you all are trying to figure out how to work together on the same code base. Um, and Git helps us really manage both of those things pretty well. So Git does help us, you know, um, it has tools in place where we can more easily collaborate with um, individuals on the same code base. And um, it also allows us to do a lot with um, combining those changes together. And then additionally, you know, um, it just helps us saving history with our projects. Like, you know, if I have um, a change and I deploy a, a change and it seems like everything's working, but then turns out um, I introduced a bug or something like that, you know, it gives us the opportunity to roll back in history within our um, projects. So it's very, very powerful. That's what makes it very, very um, popular as well. And so Git is something that you can use locally, but also you can use it with a server. You know, when I say using it with a server, I mean like it could be hosted, you know, on the web or um, something of that nature, um, hosted on a network versus just having Git running locally on your computer. Um, you know, both of those are an option. Typically we use both of those in combination. Um, and so that's really where GitHub comes into play. So Git is something that, you know, we install and use locally, um, but we also have usually some server set up for our repositories, and that is how different individuals would share access to um, one central, you know, repository. And um, that's going to be, you know, like I said, that's the combination between Git and GitHub. So you can interact with Git using the CLI or the command line which is basically um, like terminal if you're on a Mac or um, if you're on Windows. Uh, I think you have command prompt and PowerShell and a few options. Um, but yeah, so when it comes to GitHub, I think that that's where, you know, most people are familiar with if you're in a developer um, world, like learning or uh, just getting started, you start seeing people talk about GitHub. And GitHub is actually a specifically um, a site or uh, it's a cloud-based tool, you know, but it is pretty much a site that we use. So let's see, here's my GitHub. This is my homepage. Can you all see? Um, my Chrome right now. Okay, thank you. So um, here on GitHub, you know, like I have different projects that are on my computer. Not everything that's on my computer or what I would say local is actually on GitHub, but that's, you know, it's just kind of up to you how you end up working with it. But for the most part, anything I care about saving, um, even if it's just in the short term, if I'm gonna put a decent amount of work in and it's not just like something I'm sitting down with for the night, I will put it on GitHub because that's like where all of my code is hosted. That's the history for me. And if anything happens to my computer, all my code will be um, saved there. So, um, you know, I've been using Git and GitHub since I think I was very, very first starting off. And I think it's great that it was one of the first things that I did learn. Um, when you're like very beginning, unless you're in a boot camp or something like that, people don't might not necessarily learn Git and GitHub, and it it goes a long way. Um, you know, there's a lot to learn about using the tool, um, but there's like some very basics to get started in that you'll use and become functional with. Um, and then as you get 
you know, more involved and spend more time coding or work on bigger projects, you know, you learn like how to use some of the more advanced features as well. So it's all just, you know, an experience based thing. And GitHub is really awesome because um, for us as developers, it, this is known as usually known as your um, your portfolio, you know, so you may build yourself a site, but when it comes to your individual profile, you know, you may actually build yourself a portfolio here. And um, for me as a developer, since I started out using Git when I first started learning um, web development, like my entire uh, project history, everything I've worked on, not everything, but a lot of the stuff I worked on that was public or personal projects, it's all here since 2014. So. That is, um, I've been having this profile, so my entire career as a, um, you know, being a software engineer. So I have a lot of repositories here. I teach a lot, so a lot of my repositories are demo repositories as well. Just like today, you know, I'll probably create something that I want, you know, you all to um, interact on. Um, so I do have like a lot of those, but I also have projects that I work on or um, might have contributed to, um, or, um, you know, that there are like basically portfolio pieces that I want to highlight to those that are visiting my profile. And so, you know, I'm not going to say my pins are very up to date at the moment, but these are like the pinned items that I have here. So these are basically things I really want people to see because anybody can see any of my public repositories that I have um, created or forked. But on the overview page, that's where, you know, like basically you get to kind of like set it up and highlight things. So when you are doing the hackathon, you know, this would be great if it's your first project or, um, you know, one of your first projects on GitHub because, you know, it's basically starting out your portfolio. So you can set up your profile and um, as you participate in more events, um, do more projects and things of that nature, definitely take advantage of this being like that central place where you kind of like host, you know, your technical experience. Um, and it might not be GitHub, you could use GitLab um, or, you know, if there was another tool that came out that you, you liked their, um, that site, that's fine. But, you know, basically having this, um, this technical um, portfolio, it really is kind of like a part of the, I, I would say it's kind of ingrained in the culture a bit now within like the tech community, um, at least in the uh, US tech community. So um, let me see, the first things that we're gonna do or before, I don't see any hands, so I'm just gonna remind you all, like if you do have a question um, or want me to stop and go to something, then please just, uh, raise your hand in the chat. Um, but uh, Tammy, go ahead. So my question is, if you learn GitHub, I know like some companies use um, Bitbucket, which could be similar, is that correct? In my experience with Bitbucket, I haven't used Bitbucket in a long time. I didn't know they had like a, a Git version. I, I wasn't sure because oh, I know Bit in my Bucket. previous Oh, job, yeah, okay, Bitbucket, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think, oh, I have used Bitbucket. I'm thinking about it, some a different tool. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's basically, it's basically um still, it's still using mm -hmm. Git, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Because I it's, know in my previous job, we did use Bitbucket, <laughs> so I wasn't sure if you understand GitHub, would it also translate to, you know, using, I mean, Bitbucket as well. Yeah, because I'm like thinking, you know, for the most part, those Git commands and everything interacting from the CLI, like some of the different cloud providers, they might use, they might give you extra features, but the, but Git the tool, you know, all those different Git commands, all of those are built into the, you know, version control system. So as long as you can like clone and um, commit, add, uh, push, then basically it's the same thing. Um, but I don't know what other extra features Bitbucket might have. For example, you know, GitHub also has, um, they have pull requests built into the platform. They have, um, what I wanna say, they have some other tools that they're trying to build, like having projects where you can kind of like plan and track your project, like a little bit of a lightweight project management system. Um, 
and things of that nature. And GitHub is very popular for the open source um, software community, not the only source, of course, but it's, it's popular for open source. So a lot of the thing features on GitHub are centered around collaboration and like, you know, public collaboration, open collaboration. So hence, um, you can submit issues and a lot of um, projects like technical projects, they host their code and manage their code and their, um, you know, open source community through GitHub. So that's what GitHub is mostly known for. And that's been my experience with uh, with using that as a tool. And um, like, like you mentioned, Bitbucket and GitLab are some other um, options. So the main thing, the other thing that they do differently, and then I'm, I will go ahead and like start um, looking at a repository. The main thing that I noticed too, that they do differently from a, um, from a account perspective is when you are an individual, uh, GitHub charges for you to have um, private repositories. And then I think they kind of, some of the other platforms, they kind of swap it where they let you have private ones um, for free and then they charge for public. So that's one thing that's been different. But overall, as a software developer, if you are new to um, using Git and you're just starting out with GitHub, you can definitely, um, you know, it's, it's, it's best to keep most of your projects public. Um, and that might feel kind of weird as a um, be as like if you're new to the field. Um, but like I said, people, you know, really want to know, like, what is you, what can you do? <laughs> like, what's your experience like, you know, and the best one of the best ways that we have in the community oh I won't say it's the best but it's one of the most common things it's just to kind of like be able to see you know someone's um code see the behind the scenes of your projects um how do you solve problems how do you implement features uh, what's your coding um you know your code look like that's kind of um how a lot of folks can evaluate you know um developers that they're interested in or developers that they're hiring so um, I don't know, it's, it's you know, your code's gonna be in the public, but I think you should be like completely, um, you know, learn to kind of get comfortable with that. Uh, and uh, it will definitely be helpful for you as a, as a developer to kind of have that, that portfolio out there. Um, let me see, okay, there we go. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and log into GitHub. So um, there may be folks that don't have, I, I don't know, hopefully everybody did um, set up a GitHub account. Um, is Katie still here? Katie, are you still uh, monitoring the uh, admissions? Not sure if I lost Katie for a minute. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to, I'm already logged into GitHub. As you can see, I'm going to put this uh, link in the chat, but this is a um, repository that we're going to just take a bit and explore, you know, nothing um, to involve, but just kind of take a few minutes to see what's going on there and um, just get acclimated to um, digesting some information in the repository. So here's the link. This is, uh, if you are like a JavaScript developer, you might be familiar with Node. Um, so, you know, we're not going to do anything necessarily major with this um, repository, but we're just kind of going to explore this one um, before we jump in. So Node.js is the... Um, the account name and node is a particular project that they have, um, you know, within their repositories. So there's the organization, basically, you know, the organization site, which is similar to um, my personal profile or you could say basically identical, depends on what type of um, account this is, but it's pretty much, you know, this is their profile. You can see they have what they have pinned, you know, with this being an open source project, uh, the things that they have pinned are the main, um, the main project that people contribute to, um, 
help. So, you know, they kind of had it set up a bit as like a landing page, um, release notes. So any updates, whenever new updates come out, there's also release notes, which will tell you like what was changed and um, what might have been fixed between versions. Um, they have an API, they have a a build tool here, and then this is their website. So their website code is also hosted here as a project, um, the, the notejs.org. So you can see, you know, this is just coming to this project in particular. And like I said, if you have been using JavaScript, you might be um, have used Node before. So we're just going to take a look at this, uh, the main project, which is um, Node.js. So when you uh, take a look at different projects in GitHub, you basically see, you know, um, on the main page, you see the code for the project. Uh, so this is like all of the files and folders within here. And then once you get down beneath the um, basically the directory uh, structure, then you will see a readme. Readme is very common in um, GitHub and, you know, some other um some other Git tools may you may do the same thing, but a README is basically it's uh, something we call Markdown. So it's just like a lightweight um, text editing that format that you can do. It's like a plain text document, um, but you can kind of format your information, and um, the GitHub UI will automatically show your uh, README on the top level. It'll automatically show this um, in the browser for folks. So it's a good place to share information about the project if you are say for example working on a personal project um like during the hackathon this would be a good place to say you know what is the project um what are your goals you know what are the features that you're trying to build um who's working on the project you know basically you kind of have a landing page where you can give some high level information um things that you want to highlight about the project uh, this is an open source tool, so they have um, focus around those developers that are using this tool, and then they have focus around folks that might want to contribute and actually write code for um, the tool as well. So that's kind of, you know, what's going on with this project in particular. So you will always see this kind of page when you come to a new project. So, um, and when you create your own repositories, you can be mindful of what you do with this information here, because this is basically, like I said, if it's your portfolio, then this is how you highlight to somebody, you know, here's the experience that, um, that we're ex demonstrating within this project. And, you know, here are, you know, some of the things that we plan to do. And, you know, you can explain a little bit, people can kind of see a little bit more um, behind the scenes on the projects that you worked on. So we're going to clone this repository. And then um, a few things, you know, we're gonna take a look through the logs. So we're going to run our first command um, in the terminal. And then we're also going to, uh, like I said, just kind of take a look around. I'm sorry, y'all, I got the fussy butt today. So we're going to go ahead and have everybody log into github.com and let's see. Uh, I think I put the link in the chat. Mm -hmm. I think come on. I just wanna uh get my share back so I can actually show you all how we can go through cloning together. 
So are there any folks that need to set up GitHub today? Like you haven't set a profile yet. Close that. The view is different. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a lot of baby life going on. Um, I'm just like kind of catching up on the chat. Um, he's very, very curious and interested, but also uh he's kind of getting to the busy phase now. And he will be five months next week. Uh no, like in two days, actually. So very very fun now he like does a lot of stuff he's very active i just don't know why i lost my um i had lost my screen y'all sorry that's why i was pausing because i want to share a screen but you know i guess i can just do it from here that's fine so i'm going to keep this one up and I am on a Mac today, so um, the UI that you'll be seeing from me would definitely, you know, obviously be um, Apple, but if you are on um, Windows, you will still want to follow a similar process, I guess you could say, which is that um, share screen, share my desktop. You still will want to follow a sim similar process, which is that, you know, you want to be using some type of terminal that you have on your um, machine, uh, whether it's like for me, um, I, like I said, I'm using terminal because I'm on when I'm on the Mac. So you want to have um, some type your command line and then uh, we will be using the GitHub UI as well. Do, do can I hide these? Yes. Okay. So um I'm going to go back to the page that I was looking at. And I think I don't know if someone said that their um view may be a little bit different. Um, you know, depending on the screen size, this stuff might adjust a bit and then um I don't know. I think I have this in dark mode or something like that. But if you are on the Node.js slash note page, you should see this information. Now, if you're not logged in, then that might be the main um, way that you would see a di uh, some different features. So you want to make sure that you are actually logged in. Um, so up at the top right hand corner, um, you know, my profile is actually signed in here. I think if I was incognito, you um you'll see mostly the same information, but just make sure you are logged in. So I'm going to clone this repository. And when you want to clone a repository, you always want to um, run a git command in order to copy the repository. You don't want to download this because you're not going to be able to um, like interact with other folks that are using the same code base. Um, so you definitely want to always clone and there's like three different options that you have for cloning. So for me, I will be cloning, I will be cloning between um, HTTPS because that's how this uh, machine is set up. Um, if you are cloning with SSH, as long as you already have set up your um, SSH key, um, then you would be cloning from this URL. Uh, so there's those two options. And then for people that end up using the CL, uh, the GitHub CLI, they have um, command as well. So there's a few different options here. Typically, you're in HTTPS or SSH. Um, so every repository has this main um, URL that you would clone from, um, and you need to be on the main page of the repository to see the uh, clone URL. So just make sure that you are there um, and it's underneath this uh, code button. So I am going to copy my URL and my terminal. Ooh, this one is big because I was teaching with this one. Um, let me make a new terminal. Okay, 
So I am here uh, by default. The terminal is going to throw me into like my home directory um, within the file system. That's, you know, that's typically the case. So depending on like if you're on a Mac or on the Windows, you kind of would get used to um, the directory structure, I guess you could say. So I know that after, um, you know, spending a bit of time being within the Mac OS that here within my home directory, if I hit LS, I will see my um I will see my main file my main folders within the home directory. So uh I'm going to go to my desktop and I usually keep all of my projects um on my in a folder on my desktop. So I'm going to be navigating that way. Um and if you don't have a project folder there, you can put one there. Um or you can just clone this directly to your desktop that's fine as well um somebody raised their hand hold on joan or that's joanne fine. is it joan? joan okay go ahead so i am um i've loaded this before but i've never really worked with it and so i i followed uh your instructions to um let me expand my window again to go to code and i guess i'm going to use https how did you did you follow the um setup instructions to use a ssh key no i did not get that instructions i i haven't taken the steps to do ssh so you haven't um set up git on your computer yet i'm not yeah, sure yeah. i mean I, I have github account because i probably set this up once before but it's been a while okay but i don't know if i have i possibly could have git but i'm not sure Okay, so you may actually need to install Git, but um, do you have your console or your terminal open? For Git? So, no, just on your computer. Like I have terminal because I'm on the Mac. Um, you might have but another can, command line. Yeah, I can open up command prompt if. Yeah, um, because you should be able to check and see, you probably um, need to install it. If you don't remember installing it, um yeah i know we probably need conference to... once and may have have a demonstration but this is quite a while ago so okay i don't remember if i have git how do i check to see if i have git um i think you would do git dash dash version um, let me go back to you I'm only using one monitor right now yeah um, uh git space dash dash version G so that would be the command that you all can run to see if you have uh, let me see if i go to terminal um if it says git command not found then you don't have git okay so git space dash dash version all right and then i was just going to copy this in the chat if there is folks that need to um, so I'll say we are recording this. So depending on where you are in the process, uh, since we won't be able to like kind of go through all the way from the um, install together, I will put this in the chat and then um, this is being recorded as well. So if you end up, you know, you might want to, um, once this is over, kind of go through the installation process or even now, you know, kind of get yourself started with the installation process if you haven't already. Um, and then we will be going through kind of like, um, I'll be going through the material, just kind of showing you all how to interact with um, with the repositories as well. And if you're kind of like, I have to follow along um, a little bit behind, you'll still have these recordings as well. Um, and we have a Slack community where you all can ask questions also. So I'll share that information. Um, so I was going to, I keep losing the Zoom controls y'all. So sorry about that. It's just, it kind of does what it wants to do. So I'm trying to find the chat so I can send that to you all. Um, but if you 
don't need, um, I think that was it. If you don't need to do the installation, then um, you can follow along with me. Otherwise, if you are looking for it, when you, if you registered for this event, um, there is some installation instructions on the um, information page for this event. Because I really cannot, like Zoom is being real difficult for me right now. Okay, so, um, with that being said, I have terminal and um, uh, this is kind of in the way. I am here on my desk uh, in my home directory. That's where I am by default. I know that because of the little um, tilde uh, or it's like the little squiggle here. I think that, yeah, that they have. Um, so I need to go to my desktop and on my desktop, I have a, a folder called, I think, GitHub repos or repos. So I'm going to CD to my desktop and then um, let me see. Uh, yeah, all the screenshots on Mac get saved on the desktop. So that's fun. Um, OK, so I have all these screenshots and then here's my uh, repos right here. So. Oh, yay. That made my stuff come back. Yeah, Git Bash is similar to Terminal. Um, so if you are on Windows and you use Git Bash, it is um, way more helpful. And you will need to, if you don't have any um, setup, you should set up uh, SSH. You have to set up one route or another to um, properly um be able to sign in to GitHub from your command line. So with that being said, um, there is some instructions to set up SSH. So you, you don't want to skip that part. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time um, like cloning and um, sending and receiving data back and forth. So for me, um, let's see, got all the controls everywhere. At least I got the chat back. So here is, sorry. Where is everybody? I want to send you all the um, the URL to the hackathon um, Get and GitHub page. So there's uh, in, install instructions there. OK, so I am using. Or I would say, yeah, I'm using uh, the HTTPS because I don't have SSH set up on this computer. I have it set up um, differently. But if you have SSH, then it's no main difference. It's just you use a different URL. So um, you want to copy that URL. And then I'm going to terminal. And like I mentioned, you know, I'm on my desktop right now. And I have this uh, repos folder. That's why I'm going to copy my project. So let me go into here and I can see, you know, just by hitting LS, that's listing out what I have in here. I can see all the folders I have. So I'm just gonna clone this right here. So it you know, it's up to you which folder you wanna put yours in, but once you find your folder and only once you have found your folder, you can go ahead, hit get clone, type get clone, and then you can um, add the URL it notice it ends in dot get so that's the url so this is basically going to copy this entire project for me it's going to create a um a node folder and it's going to have all the files in it that are um here in this project at this point in time as well as um copying some of the structure um of the project as well so um we'll talk about branches in a little bit but they have branches here um a lot of branches but they have branches so that's something that we can um engage with and interact with as well when we have cloned the project so this one's taking a little bit of time but um it will download and what i want to have you all do let me see Oh, wrong window.
Um, so once you have cloned your repository, um, just take, we won't say um, 15 minutes, but just take 10 minutes um, for now and open up the repository in your IDE. Um, you know, you can basically uh, look around some of the files. And um, so, I mean, if you don't worry about breaking anything because you, you won't be able to like do any damage to you know their project um, itself but you can kind of explore and um, on the command line you can type git log and um, you'll be able to see a bit of history from the repository as well so you know just go ahead take some time explore around um, so like I said once it's done downloading you can type git log in the um, in your command line and you can also open up the repository in your IDE. So I have um I have the repository uh or the IDE. What do I have set up right now? VS Code, I think I just set up VS Code. So um I can open my project up in VS Code. Let me see if I miss anything in the chat while we were doing this as well. Unable to access, could not resolve host. Um, that you. Why does it look like that? Uh, Tammy, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think you were mentioning you was going to open up the IDE. Um, like, if you don't have VS Code, is Python IDLE okay? Or what other IDEs are you? Would you suggest if you don't have VS Code? It would be whatever. Uh, I mean, whatever you're going to code in. So, like, you you know, if you're just doing Python, um, and you have like a Python specific IDE, that's fine too. Uh -huh. Um, like if you have some type of JetBrain software or something, um, just how, however you normally open up your um, your your uh coding projects. Okay. Okay. I'm having a fun time with my tech over here. I'm oh, sorry, Jessica. Um, what was the screen that you said after we open up our IDE? Um, what was that code after that? Okay. Um, this one? Yes. Okay.
Jessica, it looks like I'm having a hard time opening it up in my IDE. It keeps on asking me which file I should open in my IDE. Um, do you have like an option to open your whole, like a whole directory? And I wonder, like um, you said the IDE you're using is for Python. Yes, idle. Maybe I should just go and um, use another one. I have another ID. Because I just wonder, because Node is a JavaScript project, um, if it might be a little bit weird for it, because um, those those are kind of, those are slightly, not slightly, but those are pretty different. Um, I don't know how that um, IDE works, if it, hand, if it handles other languages. Um, no worries. I can go and use another one then and see. Okay. Um, if you all are looking for VS Code or Visual Studio Code, I'm going. I'm about to open mine up, but you can see um, code.visualstudio.com. You can download from here, um, and that's the IDE that I'm going to be using right now. Um, I used to use Atom, A T O M, Atom. So uh, if you have like something like Atom or Sublime, or there's like quite a few other ones that folks may have. Um, used that's fine as well just however you will open your um projects but for me like i said i'm going to just go ahead and use visual studio code and so um there's a couple ways that that you can do this so if you have the command line um or there's a command line or um a command uh, that you can use from the command line for visual studio code if that's set up then you can say code and then the name of the folder. So uh, this node folder is the project that was downloaded. So I can say code node, uh -huh, which is kind of, well, that was not intentional, um, but you can say code and then whatever the project name is, and that will open up uh, VS Code for you. Otherwise, if you um, need to open up Visual Studio Code directly, you can launch your application. And then um, to open your project, you can go to open folder. And you can navigate this way. So for me, you know, I can go from my desktop and I know inside of, on my desktop, I have my repos folder. And this is the note folder that I just created. So this is my alternative option for opening it. Um, I can just go ahead and highlight the entire folder, hit open, and I would be able to see the entire project here. So that, in addition to opening up um, the note project, if I now change directory into the folder, um, my command, my terminal might be set up a little bit differently than yours, but mine has some extra tools um, that are kind of installed. So that's mostly, um, you know, UI stuff. Like here, when I navigate into a project folder, if it is a Git repository, then I will see some information about the um, project. Like here, I can see that I am, this is a Git project, and um, I can see like what branch I'm on as well. So that can be helpful. Now that I'm here, uh, so you have to run this um, command inside of the project folder. Um, I'm going to run git log. And git log, you know, is you're, pro you're probably not going to be able to see all of the information that's in here. But basically, this is a command that lets you see um, the last few, or not last few, but the commit history for the project. Um, commits are basically like a save point. So um, you can see a little bit of information about um, that commit or that save point. Some of this stuff is saved by default and some of this stuff is based on whatever the um, developer included whatever information they included at the time, like um, a short description. You usually include a short description or a message with your um, commit so that you would basically know what is happening, what's the change that you made, um, or what's the change that you know you're saving, basically. So here, you know, if if there's too much information to display on the page, then you can just um, arrow down in your uh, console or and you'll be able to see just like the history um, trailing, I think it's, yeah, trailing back in this uh, project. 
if you want to get out of here, um, you can just type Q. You should be able to just type Q and that should close that out for you. But there are some different type of information you can see here. And I'm going to um, we're going to go on to uh, work with some of these commands after this. But I just want to kind of show you, you know, you can see the commit. And this is like um, a unique stamp here. So every commit has this uh, unique stamp that's kind of generated for you. Um, but they do typically include your author. The author is based off of how you have your profile set up locally. Um, and then, so like it'll pick the name, whatever name you're including, and then whatever email address you use, uh, it'll basically grab that information as a part of your commit. And then the timestamp, the exact timestamp for the um, commit. This is like whatever message was provided at the time. And then some of these other items are like a little bit more meta information about um, these different projects. So like they have reviews here and um, some, and they have uh, the pull request URL, but you may not see all of that, but you'll usually see at least the author and the date and you'll see some type of description. Um, so I hit Q to get out of there. And then, you know, inside of the repository, I'm in the, this is the project folder. This is the entire project folder uh, based off of what we saw online. So, you know, I can see any of the files here, actually go in there and read them. And this is what we mean by open source. You know, open source is basically when the source code, you have open source code within your project. So you are pretty much allowing, um, you know, the code to be viewed publicly. And a lot of times you also have some type of license as well that um, you should typically have a license for open um, source software. It tells you what you can or cannot do with the software, how you can use it, if you can resell it or not, if you can use it on a paid project or not, basically. Um, it tells you what, what are the rights you have to that software or what rights you don't have. Um, so that's just kind of something, you know, that a lot of projects have and um, a lot of tools that you use, they may actually have open source. So you can actually see this. Um, and if you were interested, you could contribute to those code bases as well. Um, so let me see. Sorry, now, Jessica, the next thing that we're... Oh, go ahead. How did you exit out of the commit? Um, it was the git log in order mm -hmm. to uh in order to get out you just type q you should be able to type q and then that will get you out of there okay and you are correct so vs q. code does work um over ID, okay so it works perfect so um oh the next thing i wanted us to do is to we're going to clone a repository and i'm going to give you all um access to interact with the repository. Um, so we're going to clone, uh, make a change locally, and then um, commit and push that change. So if you never heard none of, any of those words before that I just used all together in a sequence like that, that's okay. Um, after we get going done going through this flow together, um, you should be able to do that. So what I would like to have everybody do while I um, get ready to explain this next section is please in the um, chat, can you um, send a direct message to me um, with your username, your GitHub username? So when you go into the chat, hit the drop down and look for my name directly. That way you can send me a direct message instead of sending it into the entire chat. So take a look at um, GitHub. Let me see what your profile username is. So mine is Jessica. Um, just send me a direct message with your profile username, and I'm going to need that for the next exercise. Um, so the next thing I want to cover with you all is basically how does the workflow look like in Git? So when we are working with Git, you know, we typically have something called a, um, branches and we will have one main branch. So the main branch, or in this case it's called main, 
um, typically called Maine. Um, the main branch is basically, this is like the source of truth. This is the code, like the most current version of the code. That's that's one way you can do it. You know, you, there's uh, some more complicated workflows, but this is the main one I'm going to talk about for right now. You have one main branch. That's where your live code lives. That's the most up-to-date version of the code. And what you would do is, as an individual contributor to that project, you would clone the remote repository. So the remote repository would be the um, repository that's hosted on the internet somewhere, typically GitHub, right? That, that would be the remote repository for us. So our local repository is going to be the version that we have on our computer, and the remote is the version that is hosted on GitHub. So we just did this right for the Node project. We looked at the remote repository. The remote is hosted on GitHub. We did a clone, and now we have our own local version of the rep repository. So our changes to the code are not automatic, but Git gives us some tools that we can use in order to basically send and receive changes back and forth. But as of right now, you know, anything that we do locally is not going to make or break the project at all. Um, we will have to actually have access to interact with that repository and send and receive data um, in order to make changes to, you know, the central code base. So we have our own local version. We created that by doing a Git clone. And what we will typically do, this is a workflow that we're going to practice and one that you would um, uh, be able to use uh, pretty often. Pretty much this is like the, the, the main workflow that a lot of people get started in and use uh, frequently. You just have a main branch. You clone that locally, and then you go through this process of making changes, which we call unstaged, adding those changes literally with a git add command which we would then call a staged change. And then you will commit your changes. Um, so those are our committed changes. Once we have um, made our changes and then we use Git to add and commit them, then we can pull anything that might have gotten updated from the remote repository. And then from that, we can um, push. So this is a bit of a workflow, you know, you basically go around and around in a circle. Um, you only clone one time, the very first time, and then you pretty much go through this cycle where you constantly, you know, you make some changes, you add them, commit them, pull. So when, when I say pull, I mean that I'm going to take data from or uh, basically pull in any information that I don't already have from the remote. And push is basically send changes that I have to the remote. So pull is pull information into your local and push is push information out from your local. So we're going to go through um, how we can actually run these uh, commands and um, have you all like basically follow along and then um, talk about what these different changes, what these different um, commands mean. By the time you're at resolving, you flatline. <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically how this ends up looking in the long run is you you have um, branched out and made these changes. And once you resolve and push, you basically go back into the main. So this kind of squashes everything back down, like like you're saying, into one straight line. But right now, you know, as you are making changes, you kind of have branched off from the history. OK, so I got a lot of folks sending their um, username. And there's a lot of you, so I'm going to try to <laughs> get through that um, fairly quickly as we're going through this. But uh, let's see. I'm going to make you all a. I'm going to, mm, mm, mm. I want you all to clone a repository from me, and I'm going to add you all to the repository as well so that you can, um, you can interact with those commands that we just talked about. So I was going to use this one, but I think like all the good animal names are kind of, 
taken. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna do this. I will. I want this read me for sure. Okay, I'm gonna make a quick repository and then you all are gonna interact with this one. So I'm gonna call it Hackathon Names. And I'll make it a public repository. So you all don't have to copy this part, just, you know, this is the repository I'm gonna have you interact with. Um, so I'm gonna give it a name, uh, it will be public and I will add a readme and the readme like I said, is going to basically be a file that we can see on that home page. I'm going to, um, I'm not going to do any ignore. And I'm just going to leave the license blank right now because I don't have a license in mind. But like I said, that tells people what they can and cannot do with your code. I, I'm going to hit create. And then I do have this repository um, or this readme file here. And I just want to copy some of these instructions that we have um, this is not something we're going to do right now, but this is uh, going to be some information you can follow up with. So cancel. How can I, I can commit that? So this is the repository we're going to work with. So what I will have you all do is here's the um, URL. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, clone this repository. And then inside of here, you want to make um, a file. And then instead of animals, let's just do with your name. Okay, so we'll we'll uh we'll do that names. So I have everybody's um username. So go ahead and clone this repository. Hackathon names, yep. Um create a new file and then try to get status. And I'm gonna do this now as well, since um I don't have this repository locally. So I'm going to go ahead and go under code. And again, you know, this is my first time getting a copy of this project. So I'm going to copy my clone URL, go to the terminal. And now I don't want to put this project inside of the other project that I was already working on. So just be careful with where you clone, because wherever you clone the project, you're basically saying this is where that project folder should live. So I'm not going to put this project inside of another one. So I can do cd dot dot to go back up a directory. So now I'm not in my node folder anymore. I'm in my repos folder. And your UI might look a little bit different than mine. That's okay. Um, but you should still see some type of indication that you're no longer in the node folder and you're in whatever folder um, is above that. So I can list out here just to see again what all is here. And now this time in my repos folder, I'm going to get clone this new URL. Oh, I copied it already. So get clone and then I have the uh, get URL. And so now that I have this, I'm going to CD or change directory to hackathon names. So see if I list this out now, hackathon names is here. So I can CD to hackathon names. And now again, since I am inside of a repository, I see automatically that this is a Git repository. So I will go ahead and open this up in VS Code. So I'll hit code dot and the dot is just gonna say open this current folder. Um, so I'm gonna hit code dot and that opens the entire hackathon names folder. 
for me or as I mentioned before you can file um open folder here so I don't need this window so I'll just minimize that one for now but that was the node folder here inside of VS code um the only thing that is here in this folder as of right now is the README. So everybody is cloning the same project. Everybody will have this version um, at this current point in time. So what you all each want to do is go ahead and add a new file directly in that folder. And you're going to call the file your name .html. So if you know any HTML, that's totally fine. Feel free to like do a very quick, uh, see. No, you can do a very quick file if you would like. And I can just say like, uh, you know, I'm I'm a front end person, so this is just, you know, no pressure to put anything here. The main thing I want you all to do is create that file with your name.html. Please do not put any spaces in your names, you know, um, use your file name, make your file name all on um, one word, dot uh, HTML. And make sure that you save. So uh, command S or file save. Okay, so this is just making those changes to the file. So now when I come back to the terminal, I wanna show y'all how things have changed. So if I go ahead and do a get status, now I will get some information about my project. So I did a get status and you can see that we have, um, it says I have untracked files which is my um, new file. And they even give me some useful information. They tell me, they kind of tell me what I might want to do next <laughs> based off of, you know, how, get, how the Git workflow works. So this is where some of those commands come in um, handy. So the status command is always just going to let us know what's the current state of our um, files, any files that we have changed locally. Um, here is telling me I can get add. So remember when we were looking at our um, workflow, you saw you would have your local version, you would make some changes, and now those are unstaged. So those changes are at this point even untracked. So we can use get add to add any files that we made changes to. Basically, this is saying I made a change here and I want to save this change um, to the project history. So I can do git add and then the file name. Once I run a git status now, I will have a slightly different um, output. So now instead of showing me that I have untracked files and recommending an add, it shows me that I have um, some staged changes which I could either unstage or I could commit. Okay, so I make my changes, I add my file, then the next thing is gonna be a commit. So this one command is a little bit, uh, you get used to it after a while, but you wanna make sure you remember all your information. So you can say get, commit dash m and then i'll put this command in the chat too um give a description of what it is that you change something brief but just describe your change so i can say i added a file for the seeker you have to put quotes around your message and you have to make sure that you put your starting and ending quote otherwise it will call you cause you an issue so for anybody here, you know, let me see. Where's every? Okay, you can do git commit dash m and then uh, sum. In quotes, you can put whatever message you want to put. So you're going to commit and hit enter. And for me, once I do that, now I can just see some confirmation. Um, so then the next thing is going to be to pull and then to push. 
So I'm going to, I'm going to pull, well, there's nothing for me to pull, but I'm going to pull. And now I'm going to push. And what that does is, let me see, that's not the right one. Here we go. Uh, I want to be here. Now, if I refresh this page, you can see that the um, file that I added and committed, once I pushed it, that sends my um, data up to GitHub. Okay, so everybody is going to go through this process, but first I need to, in order to push, I have to add you to the repository. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, and again, the main thing, uh, actually, instead of not sharing, I'll leave this one here and I'm going to go to another window. And I'm going to add you as quickly as I can add folks. Um, and in the meantime, here is the commands that we were looking at. So, Jessica, so are you saying that, I mean, I followed you all the way up into, I guess, get, get, um, what you call that, get status. So are you saying okay. I should wait until you finish to do get push? Well, you won't be able to push just yet because I haven't added anybody to the project. So you all don't have access to push to the project yet. Okay, but it but is as okay soon as to I, do all the other yeah, stuff, Yeah, it's okay right? to, it's okay to, yeah, it's okay to do all of them. Just, I'm putting the commands here so you all can see those. Gotcha. Um, get commit dash M some message, put whatever message you want. And then you'll, I mean, you can try to push. You just won't be able to push until... Um, I actually give you access. So until you uh, actually have access, you'll get an error when you try to push. But these okay. are your um, commands here. Oh, wait. Okay. No worries. So I'm going to go through. And if you are experiencing any issues, um, like with the push, I mean, with any like uh, ish, like any weird commands that you didn't recognize from what I was showing you, you can put a question in the chat. Um, I'm just going to start adding names to the project from the order that I received them in. So one thing you're going to notice about this is uh, if you try to push and there's any changes that has been made to the project um, that you don't have, then you're going to get a warning that says you have to pull before you can push. So that's basically why we tell you to pull first. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like a little bit too. Let me just add folks. So I'm gonna add collaborators. Oh, good, because I do not know my password. Um, add people. I think you would get your invite in um in your email. I don't know if they show it in the UI yet. So Carol just got one, Tammy just got one. So just check your um whatever email you have for GitHub, you can check that. It, and you should see the option to join. Yes, I just got it in my email. Okay. So once you see the um, that you have gotten that access and you uh, you add yourself to the project, you should be able to push successfully. So I have quite a few folks to add, but you know this is kind of just taking us through that first little journey of um, saving changes that we want to send to the remote repository and also um, being able to pull in other people's changes. Let's see. Oh, pending invite. Copy. 
I see a few people are coming through. So um, let me see. Like if I go ahead and refresh, maybe I'll see some folks. Okay, so we got Marky. You will have to, um, you will have to pull every time, like pull, um, like if you pull a couple of times, you'll notice like every time a few people might have sent their changes in, you know, there's basically an update um, to the repo. So as people are sending in changes, that's when you're going to have an option to keep pulling in more and more information. Let's see. So um, let me see, did I miss any like major questions? Try to get pull and got merge. Please enter a message. Okay, Emily, I'm gonna show you all how that goes um, if you got a merge conflict. Right, it says to me, everything is updated, but I kept on doing get pull and get push, but yeah, mine is not showing. Hmm. Um, got merge. This one was like an automatic merge that Emily was um, seeing, but it needs a it needs a message. So I'll show you all how that how you can get out of that. If you're stuck in that message in that um, Emily, just do. I, I, I'll 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 uh, I'll help you out with that. Let's see. Um, any other questions besides? Let's see if anybody's. or um, folks running into issues. I'm thinking, I see a few people have added this, added themselves, but. Right, mine is not loading up. It keeps on saying everything has been up to date and it shows. Marketing. Yeah, because nobody has, yeah, nobody else has made a change since then. It's been. Um, so should I go back and make a change and then try it again? Because it keeps on showing that. Well, I don't see, you didn't, you didn't push though, Tammy. So like yours. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Um, if you pushed, I should see it here. So you might have did the pull and then um did you add and um commit that file okay. change? Oh, let me go back and do it again. Hold on. Okay. So I'll go back to the commands here. And um if you need to drop off, feel free. I know um we're at 1:30, but uh I just want to kind of give folks a chance to interact if you haven't been able to and to debug for some folks that might need that as well so as soon as i get to the bottom of the list of folks to um add i'm going to go ahead and run through a few this command myself and then i'll help debug for anybody that's trying to debug Uh, okay, yes, I think some people sent theirs like multiple times. Um, Let's see. Okay. Hey, are people getting the uh, the error of not a Git repository any of the parent directories? Because if so, I solved that problem. What was the error? Uh, not a Git repository or any of the parent directories. Um, how did you get that error? What command were you running? I was trying to run the git add and um, what the problem was is that I was in the wrong directory. So I changed directory to the uh, hackathon names and then it worked. I, I couldn't remember if I overheard people saying that was a problem that they were getting or not. Um, it depends on if you met, if you were following the, um, like if you were following behind me, then you should have been in that directory CD to hackathon names like this, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and then 
no, I was, I wasn't able to follow along with you. So no, no problem. I'm just going to fill those in for you. If that sounds like this is the step you're talking about. So there was CDing into that folder. And I think we had a, a status. We technically did the status before this. Yeah. Get status. Um, and right before you would have two things. You would have um, went to, for me, it was repos or whatever folder it is that you cloned into and then get clone. Um, I'm using the magic mouse, so it's kind of annoying it does this. I keep accidentally uh, swiping. Uh, move that. Does this help? CD into repos. Uh, get clone the project. Mine went through Jessica, so you should see it. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's there. Refresh. Cool. So a few more people got their files in. Awesome. Okay. So, um, any other issues that folks are seeing right now? Yeah, I actually um, wonder, I'm having an issue, <clears throat> but it might be because I actually have VS Code set up as an interface to GitHub. So I wonder if it's like messing it up. Well, when you are working from the command line, it should it should still work either way, as long as you're in the right repo, um, the right folder. It shouldn't enter, it shouldn't, prevent you from doing those um so i'm getting like an error that it's hold on i just put it in the chat um but it says okay when i try to pull it then says like please enter a message to explain why this merge is necessary so it's like pulling and okay yeah it's an audit no that's that's normal it's an automatic okay. merge and that's something that someone else was show, showing too so basically it's gonna it's gonna merge all the changes together for you but um it needs like a message so it's a little bit of a modified version of that git commit message that we did okay. so when we do a commit we basically provide a message um and in that case it's asking you to to type a message so are you seeing output like in your terminal it says something like um lines with the with the pound would be ignored yep yeah okay similar to what emily was seeing i wonder if i can get that error right now uh -huh. okay mine is gonna show but if you are inside of the terminal here and you're seeing that um you should be able to hit I, let's see. So the letter I, I'm gonna um, put this on in a new slide. So I would basically let you go into um, insert mode and you can type on one of those lines that doesn't have a uh, pound on it. Is that where the, are you able to see that? Yeah. Okay, so you can type a message like, you know, just um, merging changes or something like that. It's just basically asking you to put some type of description in. When you're done typing, hit escape to get out of edit mode. And then um, after that, you can type colon WQ that should that's basically saving the file so it's right and quit so if you are if you go through this sequence and it works fine then this will take you back to the main terminal okay yeah i think that works so then should i do the git push command after that yeah okay it says failed do i need to you might it? have to pull again okay, <laughs> by this already. time yeah that it's okay sense. And it still failed. Okay, now I'm gonna fetch first. Whatever is that like a separate? The pull is failing. You mean the so now the push is failing. 
Oh. Yes. So try the pool again. Okay. It says that I have to commit my changes, but I definitely did. So if I go to get status, oh, now it's saying I have to commit because I've, okay, this is confusing. It wants me to commit. Okay. I'll, I'll let you share. I'll let you share. I'll let you share the screen. Okay. Um, sorry. And, <laughs> well, it's so, this is all, this is totally normal. This is totally normal. I'll let you share the screen so that um we can look at it. I just want to put this up here for folks. If you, uh, you got stuck with the error, you can hit I, um, then type changes online. Uh -uh. Then you can hit escape. This is lowercase I, it just wants to keep capitalizing it. Um, okay, so I'm going to put that there for the moment um a, who was that that was just who was just having that error uh that was, was me that esther yeah esther okay do you want to share your screen i'm going to stop my share sure. and again as i mentioned if you um if you're still getting value out of this feel free to hang around um otherwise if you do need to drop off feel free to do that as well and i am Where'd my chat go? I want my chat back. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, so let's see. You yeah. have um. So it says I have scroll to scroll. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So no, yeah. Okay. Just scroll to the first time you got this uh, issue. Um. I just, so I can see like basically what the history was that you ran. Yeah. It's, so I guess. Okay here i like closed it and opened it again so let me that's I'm gonna get pulled pulling with all specified okay that's just a hint so you did the pull and the pull went through oh error there was a problem with the editor vi so whatever you were saving it didn't save right there where it says error there was a problem with the editor vi not committing merge oh wait where does it say that uh right where you yep um oh i see okay so that that file popped up that was telling you like you know you can save your changes there that's what we were talking about yeah it, but however for some reason it didn't save properly when it closed so okay. that's what that error was um failed to push okay and then you ran a pull again and after the hints what does it say you have then, not concluded. Oh, your your other merge was stuck basically. Can I see get status? Yeah. And then I'm gonna keep so it's saying adding. that I have to commit other people's files. <laughs> yeah. Just um because you were merging, that's fine. Okay. Um it said, oh, type uh get commit to conclude your merge. Yeah. there's is still more things for you to pull too <laughs> so um so let's do a get pull yeah it's just because more changes are coming in as you're going so okay and then it says that's unfinished okay that's fine so um if you do get commit dash m and then you know like merge changes or something like that uh now let's see our status yeah, so that so the so the merge is all done. Can can you okay. do a pull now? Pull again. Mm hmm. Oh. Oh, see, this is like weird. That that's because you had that file open earlier, and it kind of kind of it it has like a background, like kind of saving it, and uh, it's holding on to like some little bit of a history from that file. But you should okay. be able to say like you don't want it anymore. Swap file is this open edit anyway? Uh, it's gonna open. Do you don't have another window open with this one? Do you? No, I just have one Visual Studio. Can you? Open. I could. Okay, like just in case, can you? Um, you can just close those tabs. Okay. For it. The tabs for like the other windows um the project yeah the uh html files okay. oh i see close that yeah. yeah close those just to make sure that's not because 
uh is this yeah it's basically saying that something else is editing trying to edit like it's those. got like the should i just delete the existing you can delete the button? yeah delete the one that it, whatever it has just hit d okay and then it so this to, is where we were yep yeah okay so then so um i and then all in w q oh nope okay. escape first escape that one uh-huh that's um how you get in and out of edit mode <laughs> colon wq you'll know that the uh yeah so it'll type it'll show up at the bottom when you put the colon in okay, okay so that's fine so do, do, do. can you do a status now because uh do, do, do. okay so can we get com uh these are all committed already yeah yeah i think yours just kind of you it's okay yours got a little bit uh tied up because there's when you closed out of it earlier it probably was saving something in the background um and then uh i know there's like a lot of people that had like sent direct messages so if you were still waiting for your um name to get added just uh send me a direct message again because it'll come to the bottom of my list and um i'll probably just go for like another 15 minutes or so just to kind of work through this with folks um, for anybody that wants to hang around and then um i really don't want to uh get this name wrong um k me, sorry um it's it's a quickie question uh, I was trying to follow the, the instructions with the terminal and it wasn't working, wasn't working, wasn't working. And with VS Code, I noticed that it had that branch thingy and I clicked on that and just followed what VS Code said to do and it worked. Is that? Yeah, so what you were looking at is basically the um, VS Code has like a UI or a GUI for Git. So it, it is following the same processes. It's just using the um the editor instead of using the command line right so but are you but are you still seeing those that's this it's the same thing um okay. it's just that the editor is doing those um commands under this hood for you so um the main thing would be are you seeing your files show up yeah it's showing like up. are you seeing the updated files show up um after merging and um pulling it's, my name is showing up on your um under the hacker name on the GitHub. Okay. So I'm figuring that works. It just was weird that the terminal wasn't working at all. And so I just wanted to make sure that that was okay. Um, Are you on Windows? Did you say you're oh, on Windows? No, it's a Mac. Oh, weird. Um, And then what wasn't working on your, um, the terminal like the different commands weren't working? I was trying to, I doing the commit and pull and push and all that. It was acting like everything was fine. It said everything's all updated, everything's fine, everything's gorgeous. I, I'm not directly quoting, obviously, because it the terminal didn't say quote everything's gorgeous, but it just wasn't. I kept refreshing the the GitHub page and it wasn't showing. It wasn't up. showing uh and then I went to the okay. and I was like, what happens if I click on this? And I said, put in your message here. And so I'm like, okay. And it says, you wanna you'll do this and this. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> And then I refreshed the <laughs> theme up. So I just. That's totally fine as well. If you were able to follow through with the um, the GUI for the um, for Git, uh, it can be very helpful. Now I'm going to share my screen and I don't know. Let me see. Maybe I can see some of these. Um, maybe I can see some of the output from the uh, UI in um in vs code now i always I'll, I'll say for the most part i always use um the terminal for my git management that's not the only way that you interact with git so for example here um for one i could actually run a terminal directly inside of this project it's very easy to open up the pro the terminal inside of the project if you open it from vs code um it'll automatically open inside here so you can see this is hackathon name so i didn't have to navigate to it it just kind of drops me right here um i can do a status i'm gonna pull because i know i probably need to pull and that should give me a bunch more uh file so it gave me like um four or five more files which is good 
it. So now what I want to show is like, if I was to make a change to mine, like say, instead of this being a body tag, I want um like a paragraph. I can make some changes, right? So I'm going to save my file. Uh, did I hit save? Yeah. And now you would notice that since I made a change, Visual Studio Code is showing me some information. So depends on your theme, whatever theme you have in Visual Studio Code, it might be color coded a little bit differently. But you can see that I have this um, orange here and there's orange on this line, there's orange on this file, and there's orange at the top of this tab that shows me that basically I have some changes here that um, I, I are not up to date with the repository. So as soon as you start making changes, um, now Visual Studio Code is going to give you like um, some indicators like, hey, there's probably some, some changes here that you might want to uh, say, you know, as far as Git is concerned. So that's kind of a visual of how you can keep up with some of that. And then you will see, this is kind of what you were mentioning. Now there's a little um, notification over here on the source control tab. So yeah, this source control tab is automatically picking up that I am using Git and it is trying to give me some help with um, updating my file. So it basically is like, hey, here's your file. If I click on it, it's showing me the difference between the files. So how it used to look versus the change I just made. So I can see I deleted the line in, um, with red and I added this green. So it's just showing me the difference between the, um, the changes. So that way I can kind of see like, is this the change I really meant to make? If so, okay, cool. If not, I could go back and fix it. But you know, I can see that just by clicking there. And then it gives us some other options. So basically I could undo, which is just like completely dis discard the changes that I made. Um, I won't be able to get this back. So, you know, I could just undo if I don't like this change or I can stage it. That's the ad. So this is the equivalent of hitting the get ad. So if I do a get status, you can see I have um, modified this, so it shows as modified. I could still undo that process, right? I, I can go back or forward. And then um, now that it has been added, I can commit. So there's only one change here. So it's only one thing showing, but you might have multiple files that changed at a time. And so you would see any files that you need to um, add, and then you can commit them all at once. So once I'm done, I can hit commit. And this is the message. So it's going to ignore anything that's on um, the lines that have uh, the pounds are going to be ignored. So I would type my message somewhere else in the file and just say, uh, I am updating the description. So I'll save this. So this is saving my commit message. That's the, the same as running git commit dash m and then putting a message in there. Okay. So I have that and then it's committed. I can close that. And now it gives me the option to sync and see it will say this action will pull and push. So that's going to do the pull and push for us. And now if I come back here, I should be able to see that I just recently sent um, changes to this file. Yeah, so one minute ago is when that file change was um, committed. So now we can see I updated the description. And if I go click on that file, I can see here's the most updated version of that. So those are, um, that's the alternative option that you can have for interacting with Git. It's totally fine to do that um, if that is helpful for you. Um, I recommend getting used to or understanding what those behind the scenes um, features are. So that's why I think that it is helpful to learn it from the command line as well. So you can see what's a Git status, what's Git add, Git commit, Git pull, and Git push. Those are going to be your main um commands that you'll be using. 
And so it's basically the same flow that I just showed you. So after we go through and um, set up our project initially, which is what we did, we did um, make some changes. We added, committed, we did pulls, and we did pushes. Um, and now that you've gone through that process, you know, if you were, if you wanted to make another change, like I just did, um, you just go ahead and kind of cycle back to this point. You make changes, you add, commit, pull, push, and you go through that flow, you know, around and around. And that's the most basic way that you can keep in sync with your project. Um, let me double check there's because I see another question. Um, Okay, so and um, Esther was saying that maybe there was some duplication. Yeah, if you you don't need to use um, if you're using this the GUI right here, then you don't need to run the add and commit um, and push and pull commands separately. These uh, this GUI is running those commands for you basically. So that might have that might cause a little bit of a, a weirdness if you're trying to do both at the same time. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this is this is a, a, a nice uh, alternative option. So I have a few more minutes here where if there's anyone that didn't get a chance to get added to the repository, please just redirect message me your um, your username, the exact username, um, and then I'll add you and go ahead with your question. Um, so the SSH, I have a question. <laughs> do we do we still need to do the SSH or can we do what we just did? Were you able to push and pull that way without um any other changes? If you were able to push and pull, then you're good to go. Okay, cool. Thank you. So the SSH um is basically just it's it's like um Oh my God, it's snowing. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, cool. uh, I live in Detroit and it's literally it was 70 degrees yesterday and I look outside and it's literally the first snow. So this is Michigan weather. <laughs> um, <laughs> but sorry about that. So yeah, you if you're able to push and pull, you're good to go. The SSH um, feature is basically what will allow you to like authorize um, it, I would say, is it authorization and authentication, really? It's going to make sure that you um, have access to, uh, that you are the owner of, you know, whatever GitHub uh, profile you are um, trying to use. Like, I have to say, yes, this is definitely me, Jessica, using this, um, using my profile locally. And then I also have to make sure that, um, they have to make sure that you have access to that repository. So there's two differences between the two repositories that you all saw today. The main thing is that with Node.js, with this Node project, you don't have access to this project until someone adds you as a collaborator. So anything that you, any changes you make to that file um, or that project, you will not be able to push. You'll get an error when you try to push because it'll basically say that, you know, you don't have access to do that. Um, the, now, on the other hand, with the project that I created for us all, I added folks as collaborator. So here with me being um, an owner or being the creator of this repository under the settings, I can see collaborators, right? So I was able to come in here and add you all as collaborators. So for example, there's one person, only one more name showing up that wasn't added. So I'll go ahead and add a username here, click here and add this person. And then whatever, um, whenever you do that, then folks will get a notification. So I can see that some people are pending I can see the invitations and how many collaborators we have. Um, I can also uh, change access or remove access for people. So that is um, what allows you to be able to directly push and pull to a repository that is not your own. So if you are working with um, a team and when you are working with your teams during the hackathon, only one person needs to create the repository. 
different. And then all the rest of the team members would be collaborators, okay? So one person will create the repository. Um, you can look at how I created the repository uh, at the beginning of this uh, demo. You can look at, you know, go back to the recording and look at how I created the hackathon names folder. So I created that repository. I added the readme. And then I went ahead and cloned it locally and started making my changes. So whoever owns the repository will go ahead and create it for everyone. Everyone will clone the repository. And then the project owner needs to add everybody as a collaborator so that they can um, pull, uh, so that they can push. You'll always be able to pull, but you won't be able to push unless you have access to the repo. So hopefully that will um, help you all out and kind of getting started with that as well. And then I think there was another question. Hi, I just have a question. I just wanted to know, um, in Visual Studios, how did you how do you change up change the layout? Because I've I've had some issues with trying to get everything to layouts where I can see multiple things at the same time. Uh, it, so, for example, like you want to see multiple files and like the terminal and things like that. Um, that what you mean? Yes. Okay, so some things that you can do, um, you can get rid of the sidebar or move um, some of the panels at the top right hand corner. And then you can also drag and drop most of these windows around. So, for example, these are two windows that are open right now. Um, I can drag one around and it'll automatically let you go like top, bottom, left, right. Uh, once you get far enough into the right direction, it'll pick that up. You can kind of drag and drop that way. Um, and even once you kind of break these mini windows down, you can go a little bit further. Like I could technically open another file and put that one down here if I like. And now these are kind of like individual windows. So you can have tabs within these mini so you can you can play around with that to get um a good view when you're interacting with different files um the terminal you can open and close from um the option in the menu and there's just a little bit more you can do to um just kind of playing around with this customized layout and it's easy to hide and show the panels on the left hand side if you click on those um, different buttons. So one will show it and one will hide everything all together. Is there anything um, other than those that you're kind of having an issue with displaying? Um, it's, so basically, as I've been like practicing the code, um, like if I have like uh, two documents I'm trying to look at, and let's say I have like an HTML document and I have a CSS document, and I'm trying to, to compare it. I notice, like, if I click on, if I like try to open one, then it it'll 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 basically be a double of the previous one. And I don't I don't know what's causing that to happen. Like, it'll be one already there in a tab, but then it'll open up another one, and it'll be a double of what I already have open. If that makes sense. Yeah. So if <laughs> I navigate around to some different areas of the screen, it would kind of pick up that that it's like a new set I guess you could say a new tab set so for example like I have my file already open here if I go over and I'm active on this side of the screen if I click that file again oh I lost my my mouse if I click that file again now it's going to reopen over here even though I don't really need that one and there's a little bit of a difference between okay. these files if it's um regular like this it'll be you know regular case mm -hmm. that means the file is open and like kind of like recognize that this is when you're editing in and this um, italicized is really more so like a preview. So you uh, see it won't okay. it won't straighten out until I actually start typing in it. That's when it shows like as regular. But if it's showing italicized, it's kind of more so showing it as a preview. Um, and you just visually try to um, do your best to keep an eye on that and just like close those duplicate windows. But that's kind of what sometimes makes multiple windows open up. Does that okay. help at Thank all? Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. 
So again, if there was any other questions, feel free to throw those out there. Um, I just want to go ahead and wrap up for those that have, uh, you know, been able to follow along. And hopefully if you were using the recording, um, some of this can be helpful as well. Um, there is a lot of other things that goes into Git and there's a lot, um, you know, to learn about it. So, you know, there may be some new things that you learned today. And um, if you have used it before, um, or even if you haven't used it before, you know, some things might kind of um, be surprised. Like, for example, discovering that, you know, there is that tab within VS Code that actually helps you work through um, the Git workflow as well. So, you know, you'll learn and um, discover new things about Git. You'll also run into things called merge conflicts, which is a little bit of what we were looking at earlier with um, Esther's case. Uh, but there's different approaches to this. And during the hackathon, we would have um, mentors there as well. And uh, Git is especially one of those things where, you know, if you run into issues, it's okay. Just like reach out and see if um, you can get some feedback or some um, debugging support from from some folks because it is definitely one of those things that it, it takes some experience and getting used to um, and when you will see something for the first time like for example a merge conflict for the first time it's not like you did anything wrong it's just a natural part of the process so a merge conflict would basically be two people made changes to maybe the same file and those um, git isn't sure how to resolve the changes automatically. And so it makes us as developers intervene and say, hey, I don't know what to do with this file. There's some things going on and I don't know which ones to choose. So you as a developer go and look at the file, um, update the file, how you feel it should look, what should be the, the modified version that incorporates all of the changes. And then um, you basically would, um, mark those files for Git that, you know, okay, it's a conflict here. I fixed the conflicts and um, save those changes. So those are, that's something that you may run into with your teammates and that's okay. You can get support for that. And there's a lot of um, support on the interwebs as well for like how to handle merge conflicts. Um, branches, we didn't cover branches, but that is common um, for people to work on what we call branches. So basically, you know, um, you kind of uh, take a take a version of the code at some point in time, and um, you have your own little working version, and eventually you have to merge that back in with the um, with the main branch. So that might be something that um, you get exposure to in the future as well, as well as a uh, forking. Um, pull requests and rebasing. So we didn't cover any of those, but you know, that's just gonna be something that you'll you'll potentially see in the future. Um, let me see, last but not least, um, it will be helpful, especially with you all being your first time working on um, possibly a Git repo, try to have separate files from your teammates. Um, so if you do, if you plan to work on the same file, don't work on the same file at the same time. Um, that's not something that is like prohibited in Git. It's just uh, as it being your first time working on it, you will avoid conflicts if you all don't um, try to work on the exact same files at the exact same time. Um, if you do, then you're just gonna have, uh, you can get some support from the mentors on, um, handling merge conflicts, but the more that you all don't step on each other's toes, the, um, the easier it'll be to kind of keep the project um, or keep the Git uh, version working uh, successfully for you all. And then um, plan ahead on what you're going to be doing, who's going to be working on what, that will help out a lot as well. So if you know, hey, today, um, one person is going to work on the styling and another person is going to work on, um, you know, connecting to a database, and then a separate person is going to work on um, the UI, most likely at that point, that means that, you know, everybody's going to be working on different files. Um, Y'all are all on the same page about that. And like I said, merge conflicts are okay. Um, if you have to merge, just make sure that you all are up, um, keeping each other in sync on what information needs to stay in the file and work on resolving your changes together as well. Um, once you do that a few times, you kind of get used to it. Um, I'll stay on for a few minutes if there's anybody else that was having any issues after I um, close out the recording. Um, but last but not least, and I don't, hopefully these, this is up to date, but 
um, we do have memberships. So, uh, you know, GDI used to be a chapter uh, based organization and you know we pretty much just um you would just pay for workshops if you wanted to come to a, a major workshop um and we still have that model virtually so you know you can always sign up for any of our classes um but we do have a membership and if you are a member within gdi then that basically gives you access to all of the classes um so instead of paying class by class you could just have a membership and join any of the classes that you would like to throughout the year um um, so that is an option for you all um, just, you know, about learning in our community. Of course, our hackathon is next week. So um, I'm looking forward to um, supporting you all with that. And we do have a Slack group as well. So um, I will, I think you'll get, um, I can see if we can send an invitation to Slack for you all. Um, if you're not already in Slack from last year's hackathon, and uh, you'll be able to reach out to those of us within the community, and um, you'll be able to interact with each other for the hackathon as well that way. So I really appreciate everyone for being here um, or catching the recording if you needed to, and um, I'll stay on for um, a few more debugging things before. So if you're good to go to uh, this afternoon, then go ahead, you know, enjoy your Saturday. Otherwise, feel free to hang on the uh, call. Um, stop recording. <laughs>